I am Dr. P. Rajkumari, working as an associate professor in the Department of Mathematics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, I am going to discuss about uh, vector integration. So, vector integration is in one of the part of uh, vector calculus. So, this one is in our syllabus we are having in module 5. So, here in this uh, vector integration, today, I want to tell you about what is the vector integration, what are the topics we are having in the vector integration, so what are the applications for those topics I am going to discuss in this video. So in this chapter we are having line integral, surface integral and volume integral. So we are going to know about the what is the line integral, where we can use how to calculate the line integral and what is the formula for the line integral. Next coming to the surface integral, what is the definition of the surface integral? So where we can use this, how to calculate surface integral and what is the formula for the surface integral. And coming to the third one, volume integral. So what is the volume integral, where we can use this and same as like that, what is the formula to calculate the volume integral. These are the points we are going to discuss in the line integral, surface integral and volume integral. And here we are having three more important theorems. Theorems are Green's theorem, Stokes theorem and Gauss divergence theorem. So here these are the very important theorems and so many applications are there for the theorems here. So here Green's theorem, what is the statement of the Green's theorem and what is the application of the Green's theorem we are going to know in this chapter and where in which problem we can uh, use this Green's theorem to calculate the line integral or surface integral we are going to know. And coming to the Stokes theorem, so this is also what is the statement of the Stokes theorem, so what is the formula for that and how to calculate by using the Stokes theorem where we can use this and in the same way for the Gauss divergence theorem also. So this three theorems we are going to know in this chapter. So three integrals, line integral, surface integral, volume integral and theorems we are having here, Green's theorem, Stokes theorem and Gauss divergence theorem. So here are some of the basic definitions you should know. What is the closed curve? Let C be a curve in space. Just we are taking one curve here. See here, this one and let A, so here I am taking A and A be A initial point. Otherwise, if you are taking this one, we can write this. So, A is the initial point and B is the terminal point. So, maybe here also we can take B. So, if you are taking A to B, this will be like this. A, A is the initial point, B is the terminal point here. So, A to B. So, when the direction of the point along the C oriented from A to B. So, if you are taking like this A to B. So, this is the positive value. So, when you are calculating A to B, then we will get that line integral value is positive. And if you are calculated B to A. So, in the reverse way. If you are calculated B to A. So, here A to B. A to B, if you are calculated, that is the positive value. If you are calculated B to A, this is the negative value. So, here, the, if the two points A and B are coincides, so when it is coincides, that C is called the closed curve. So, for the closed curve, we should have the two points, A and B. One is the initial point and one is the terminal point. And here, in the direction of this, so, when A and B coincides, then we will get the closed curve. So, based on the direction, we are going to get the positive value or negative value. So, what is the line integral? A line integral is an integral where the function to be integrated, the function to be integrated along a curve, along a curve. So, what is the line integral? Line integral is an integral where the function to be integrated along a curve. So, here we can observe the curve here. Okay. Here, 
we are going to calculate the line integral way along this curve line. So the function to be integrated may be a scalar field or vector field. Here you can get the function in scalar field or vector field whatever it may be. So based on that function we are going to calculate the line integral. So line integrals are necessary. So why we need line integrals? Why it is necessary? To express the work done along a path by force. So here we can express the work done. So what is the work done value? We are going to express along the path by a force. Along path by a force. So here line integrals are needed. What is the need of the line integrals are here? So line integrals are needed to describe circulation of fluids. So these are very needed. So to describe the circulation of fluids. And they are also important in describing where it can be used or where what is the importance of the line integral means you can observe here. They are also important in describing the relationship between electric and magnetic fields. So electric and magnetic fields. So we can describe relation between the electric and magnetic fields by using the line integrals only and describe the circulation of fluids by using the line integral and we can express the work done by the along the path by a force. So the concept of line integral is a natural generalization of the concept of definite integral. So what is the concept of line integral? The line integral is the natural generalization of the concept of definite integral. What is the definite integral? Integral need to be f of x dx. So we should have the limit sum 1.2 another point. That means initial value and dominant. So f of x to f of x and dx we should have the sum defined f of x. It may be a scalar and it may be a vector where integral f of x exists. So how f of x will be exist for all values of x? In the interval a comma b. Here closed interval a comma b is there. So a and b also included. A and b also included. So this is the natural generalization of the concept of the definite integral. Definite integral. Next coming to surface integral. The concept of the surface integral is the natural generalization of definite integral. So what is the concept of the surface integral? The surface, concept of the surface integral is a natural generalization of double integral when occurring many applications. Here we are getting many applications for the surface integral. We can observe here at the diagram. So surface integral means we will get the two values. So here surface, this is one surface. Here we are defining the values here du and dv. And this is the surface we are taking as a ts. So here, the example we are taking here, we can use this in connection with center of gravity of a curved lamina. So here, we are having an application here for the center of gravity of a curved lamina. And the potential due to the charges, the potential due to the charges distributed on the surfaces, etc. Distributed on the surface, etc. So what is the volume integral. The concept of volume integral is a generalization of integral. So here we are before in the surface integral we are using two variables x and y. Here in the triple integral we are going to use the three variables. In case of integral function f of x comma y comma z is defined for all values of x comma y comma z in the closed bounded region. In the closed bounded region. So we can observe the figure here. I about the dx, dy and dz, we are going to get dx, dy and dz for the volume integral. So here we are getting the x, y, z, three variables. So above, above x comma, y comma, z for the all values of x, y and z, we are going to get the dx, dy and dz. So here triple integral over v is the volume integral, triple integral over v is the volume integral. So we can come calculate the volume integral for the any function by using the parameters, by using the triple integral. Now we are having a vector integral theorems. What are the vector integral theorems we can see here? 
So already I told you, so what are the theorems in the first slide? So we are having Green's theorem, second one is Stokes theorem and gas divergence theorem. We are having Green's theorem, Stokes theorem and gas divergence theorem. So what is the statement or what is the importance of this Green's theorem, Stokes theorem and gas divergence theorem here? These are deals with, so here yeah, first one, Green's theorem, transformation between line integral and double integral. So in the Green's theorem, we are going to know about the how to transform the given function or variables into line integral to double integral. So we are do, uh, here we are going to know about the transformation between line integral and double integral. For example, if you are, if you are they given the problem in line integral, we can convert that one as a double integral by using the Green's theorem. Then we can calculate that value very easily. So sometimes it is very difficult to calculate the given problem by using the line integral. Then we can convert the line integral as double integral by using the Green's theorem. Then we can calculate that value very easily by the transformation of line integral to double integral. Sometimes if you are getting the problem in the double integral, so then it will be solved by using the line integral very easily. Then we can transform that one into line integral by using the Green's theorem. That is the important. Next coming to the Stokes theorem, this is equal for the transformation between line integral to surface integral. So here you can use this transformation between line integral to surface integral and here we are here. Next one is transformation between surface integral to volume integral. So here we are going to know about the uh, transformation between line integral to surface integral and surface integral to volume integral or volume integral to surface integral. Here, here transformation between volume integral to surface integral. So in these theorems, we are going to transform line integral to double integral. So surface integral to volume integral, volume integral to surface integral. So by using these three theorems, so, what is the importance? Why we need to transform this line integral to double integral or double integral to volume integral or surface integral to volume integral means sometimes so some of the problems we can solve easily by using the line integral. And the, if uh, well, that problem is given in the double integral, then we can transform by using this technique or by using this thing. So, that type of problems. So, here we can solve that problem. So very easily within the step later. So what are the applications of line integrals? So up to now I told you what is the line integral, what is the surface integral, what is the volume integral and what are the theorems. So here now we are going to know about the, what are the applications for the each one. What are the applications of line integral, what are the applications of uh, surface integral, what are the applications of volume integral and coming to what are the applications of theorems. So we are going to know now. So here applications of line integral. Applications of line integral. A line integral is used. Where we are using this line integral is to calculate the surface area. To calculate the surface area in the three dimensional planes. Where we are using to calculate. For what purpose we are using? We are going to calculate the surface area in the way in the three dimensional planes and some of the applications of line integral in the vector calculus are you can see here a line integral is used to calculate the mass of body so particularly about the vector calculus this line integral is to calculate the mass of y and it helps to calculate the moment of inertia and center of mass of a body. So for example, we are taking the y. In this vector calculus, we are using this line integral to calculate the mass of the y, to calculate the mass of the y, and we can calculate moment of inertia and center of mass of the y also by using the line integrals, by using the line integrals. 
we are these are the applications particularly about the vector calculus next see the applications of surface area applications of surface area so so many applications are here for the surface integral we can answer so the surface integrals are applied in different areas of science and engineering the surface integrals are applied in different areas of science and engineering some of the applications of the surface integrals in vector calculus are as follows you can see here some of the applications of the surface integrals in the vector calculus you can see here surface integrals are used to determine pressure and gravitational force so here we can use the surface integrals to determine pressure of the and gravitational force so when we can calculate where we can calculate this pressure and gravitational force based on that fluid so we are going to use the surface integrals and in gas law of electrostatics statistics it is used to compute the electric field so in gas law of electrostatics so in that gas law of electrostatics we are going to use the surface integral it is used to compute the electric field value so we can use this one to calculate or to compute electric field so here for the fluids we are going to calculate pressure and gravitational force and here we are calculating electric field and to find the mass of the shell we can use the surface area to find the mass of the shell also okay next one it is used to calculate the moment of inertia so line integral so we are using to calculate the moment of inertia and center of mass and here it is used to calculate moment of inertia and center of mass of the shell so surface integral also line integral also we can use to calculate the center of the mass and moment of inertia next it helps to determine the electric charge distributed over the surface so electric field also we can calculate and electric charge distributed over the surface so along that surface what is the distributed electric charge we can determine by using the surface integral only so here by using the double integral we are going to calculate the area right so here two components we are having that is the total surface we are going to calculate by using this surface integrals so here this is the natural general generalization of the double applications of volume integrals so where we can use this volume integrals we are going to know now so volume integrals are already we just we discussed with the, the natural generalization of general calculus so volume integrals are especially important in physics so we can use these uh, volume integrals uh, very easily frequently in the physics and for many applications not for the few applications many applications are involved by using this uh, volume integrals in the physics example here you can calculate or we can calculate the flux and flux densities or to calculate the mass from a corresponding density function if you are having this one density function we are can calculate the mass we can calculate the mass from the density function and we can calculate the flux densities we can calculate the flux densities so here volume integral is nothing but total integral over v dv is nothing but total integral over v dx dy dz dx dy dz you should have the v component so x f of x comma y comma z for all values of x y z these are the volume integrals for the double integral also that means double integral dx dy also otherwise double integral dy dz a double integral 
PHT that like that do it on the given plane we can take the surface integral or double integral. So we are most probably we are using that one to calculate for the ADR by the double integral. So this is the generalization of double integral. Next, what are the applications? What are the applications for the vector integral theorems? Vector integral theorems. What are the theorems we are having? Green's theorem. Green's theorem. Second one is Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem. And third one is gas divergence theorem. Gas divergence theorem. So these three theorems we are having. These three are called it as these theorems are called it as vector integral theorems. So Green's theorem, Stokes theorem, and gas divergence theorem. So what are the applications of these integral theorems? So here in solid mechanics okay solid mechanics and fluid mechanics in fluid mechanics and quantum mechanics and electrical engineering so these are the areas we can use these integral theorems okay in solid mechanics also fluid mechanics also what is the fluid fluid flow what is the density flux what is the density function what is the mass of that function so we can transform the line integral to surface integral surface integral to volume integral like that so we can use these theorems in the quantum mechanics also we can use and electrical engineering in electrical engineering and various other fields these theorems will be of great use, not in the simple use. These theorems are very, very, very useful because in some of the problems you can't can get the solution by using the line integral. So you may get the solution, but it's very complicated. Then we can transform the line integral to the surface integral to get the solution very easily, and we can reduce that time and we can. Simplify the equation very easily by using the theorem like this. So, for that way, in that way, if you are thinking like that, so we can get the great use, great use in these various fields, in these fields, right? So, here, evolution of an integral of one type may be difficult and using one of the appropriate theorems. This is only I am telling here. Evolution of one integral of one type may be difficult, and using one of the appropriate theorems, we may be able to evaluate equivalent integral easily. So, why we are saying that this is the great use means, for example, one equation is there we can solve by using the line integral, but it is, it is very complex. It is very complex and difficult. At that time, we can transform this one into surface integral, surface integral by using the theorem, by using the Green's theorem, what is suitable theorem based on that we are going to use it. So we can use the theorem to transform that integral into other integral. Then, then we can calculate or we can solve that given equation to get the answer or to get the solution in easy way in easy way so this is the important application for the theorems and nothing but vector integral theorems these theorem theorems are very very useful for the complicated problems like in solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, and quantum mechanics, and electrical engineering. Some liquid problems will be there for the brown nut, brown nut water, brown water also to find out the value or the area, line integral, mass, density, like that. We can use these 
parents and it is the line integral that is integral and volume. So some of the definitions I want to discuss from here. Circulation. What is the circulation? If V bar represents the velocity of a fluid particle and C is a closed curve. So here V bar is represents the velocity of a fluid particle and C is closed curve. Then the integral, integral over C, V bar dot dr bar, T bar dot dr bar is called circulation of V bar, circulation of V bar around the curve C, circulation of V bar around the curve C. So here, so the integral over C, V bar dot dr bar. So for the circulation, for the circulation, formula is integral over C V bar dot dr bar V bar dot dr bar. This is nothing but the circulation. This is nothing but the circulation. What is the circulation? Here we are representing V bar. V bar is nothing but velocity of the fluid particle and C is the closed curve. Here you should have the closed curve. So closed curve and V is the velocity. V is the velocity of a fluid particle is the velocity of a fluid particle so that dot product over c v bar dot dr bar so here if v bar dot dr bar is zero v bar dot dr bar is zero then the field v bar is conservative so here circulation integral over c v bar dot dr bar is zero then we can say that the circulation is conservative. The circulation is conservative. So, no work done and energy is conservative. Here, we have to remember no work done and the energy is conservative. conservative. So, here, if the circulation of V bar around every closed curve C in the region D vanishes, vanishes, then V bar is said to be irrotational in D. If it is vanishes, what is that circulation of V bar around every closed curve C? If it is vanishes, then we can say that V bar is the irrotational in that region or in D. Next one is work done by force. So if F bar represents the force vector acting on a particle, Moving along an arc in B. F bar represents the force vector acting on a particle moving along an arc AB. Here, arc AB is there and a force vector acting on particle. Then, work done doing a small displacement. So, what is that small displacement we are taking as del R bar? Small displacement is L R bar is F bar dot R bar. What is that? We are taking here F bar dot del R bar small displacement. This is the back force active force vector acting on the particle. So F bar dot displacement. Displacement is D del delta R. Bar. So F bar dot delta R. Bar. Now this is the work done. So, I want the total work done. I want the total work done is equal to. So, what is the starting point and what is the ending point for the total work done? So, starting initial is A to be F bar dot del R bar. So, F bar dot del R bar. So, we are converting as the R bar. So, integral A to be F bar dot dr bar is the total work done total work done if they in the question if they are asking to calculate the total work done they have to use the formula integral a to b f bar dot dr bar f bar dot dr bar so this is called work done by this and this is the formula for the total work done this is the formula for the total work done e third force f bar is conservative 
So if it is conservative, we can say that F bar equal to del phi, F bar equal to del phi. The work done is independent of the path and sum. So work done is independent of the path. So here it is conservative means F bar, we can say that F bar equal to del phi. F bar equal to del phi. F bar is conservative means we can take the F bar equal to del phi or del phi. So in case curl F bar equal to curl F bar equal to here F bar is del phi we are taking. So curl del phi. Del phi value is 0, is 0. Then this is the scalar potential. So if it is conservative, there exists a scalar potential that is F bar equal to del phi, we can understand. So what do you understand from this? So what we understand from this? If we have given the total work, we can use the formula A to B, F bar dot D R bar. And if that one is you know, conservative, then we can say that there exists some scalar potential that is phi. So F bar equal to del phi. Del. Here in this video, what we learn? We learn what are, what are the topics we are having in the vector integration and what are the importance or what are the applications of line integral, surface integral and volume integral and vector integral theorems and what are the definitely what are the formulas for the work done and what is the circulation and what are the basic formulas we learn from this. So if you know these formulas and these applications we can solve or we can pay the inner interest and we can spend some time to uh, know the extra knowledge about the vector integration because vector integration is very important and these are having many applications many applications in real world life so here please go to the references i used uh, references if you are engineering mathematics uh, textbooks bs gravel and engineering mathematics by kv ingar and uh, some BV Ramana. So these are all the textbook reference textbooks are there. So please go to that and please uh, learn the formulas and learn the definitions to move to next problem. Then it will be easy for us to learn the vector integration problems. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.